Okay, today what we're gonna do is take a look at a solid cylinder which has some radius R, a height H, and a mass M. And we are going to determine for this cylinder the rotational moment of inertia around an axis which passes through its center. So to derive the moment of inertia of this cylinder around a central axis, first I wanna take a look at the rotational moment of inertia of a particle relative to an axis. Now the rotational moment of inertia of a particle around any axis is given by the equation mr squared, where m is the mass of the particle and r is the radius or the distance between the particle and the axis around which it is rotating. Now I don't wanna derive this. If you wanna take a look at the derivation of this, just click up here. Now the issue we run into when dealing with this cylinder and rotating around a central axis is that this cylinder is a distribution of mass. Some of the mass is at a very small radius here near the center of the cylinder, and some of the mass is at a greater radius out here as it rotates around our central axis. So we have a distribution of mass. Not all the mass is at the same position. That means this equation for the inertia of a particle is not going to apply blindly to this cylinder. We have to take into account the shape of the object. Now, despite the fact that this equation doesn't apply entirely to the cylinder, we can in fact apply this equation to a single radius on this cylinder. So what we can do is take this cylinder and rather than looking at the entire cylinder at once because it has a distribution of mass, we can look just at a single radius, small r here. So imagine we're gonna take this cylinder and just slice it into one tiny little hollow cylinder that had some radius, I'm gonna say this is small r. This could be any radius from zero all the way up to capital R. Now the cylinder would still have a height h, and it would be very, very thin. In fact, it would be infinitely thin. We want all of the material or all of the mass of this cylinder to be at a single radius. Now I understand this can be quite hard to visualize or to understand really what's going on here, so don't worry, I've got visual aids. All right, so what we have here is a toilet paper roll. You're familiar with that, I hope. Um, and really all this is is a cylinder. Now I understand this is hollow in the middle here, but we're gonna, we're gonna be okay with that. We're gonna allow that. And I want you to realize is this entire cylinder is simply made up of lots and lots and lots of very, very, very thin concentric cylinders, or really just wraps of toilet paper. This, this is single ply, this, this is just awful. But you know, that's, that's a different issue. We don't need to get into that today. All right, so to determine the total rotational moment of inertia of the entire cylinder, first we're gonna to need to look at the moment of inertia of this cylinder or this inner cylinder, which is all at a single radius. Now, in order to determine the inertia of that cylinder, we're first going to need to determine its mass. And to get to its mass, we're first going to need to determine the volume of this cylinder. Now, going back here to our toilet paper roll, I want you to realize if we were to take a single wrap of, of toilet paper off of our cylinder here, it can be unrolled into what is effectively a rectangle, or really it has some volume. It has a height, it has a width, and it actually, believe it or not, has a depth. It's a single ply, so it's, it's virtually no depth, but again, that's a different discussion for a different day. So imagine we took this inner cylinder here and we unraveled it just like we unraveled the toilet paper. That inner cylinder would have some height, H and it would have a width that was equal to the circumference of this cylinder. That is two pi r. Now you'll note that's little r, that is the radius of our inner cylinder which we're dealing with. Now remember, I was talking about volume and finding the volume of this cylinder, but here we only have an area. What we haven't accounted for is the fact that this cylinder has some 
depth or some thickness to it. Now I know we said this was infinitely thin, but infinitely thin is not zero. So we're gonna go through and say this cylinder has a wall thickness that is dr. So in realizing that this cylinder has some thickness to its walls, we can now see that when we unravel it, there's going to be some volume, or as I've shown it here, there's gonna be some depth to this rectangle. So now we can see this unraveled cylinder has some depth to it. And so now we can go through and we can determine the volume of this cylinder, which will lead us to mass and later the inertia of this slice of our cylinder. So what we're gonna do now is go through and look at the volume of a slice. Now when I say a slice, I, I really just mean this inner cylinder, this hollow shell, which we've taken a look at here and unraveled. So looking at the volume of this box here, we simply have a length times a width times a height, and that'll give us volume. Now realize this volume is not the entire volume of the entire cylinder, it's simply the volume of our little unraveled cylinder, which we've got here. So I'm not gonna call this V the total volume. I'm gonna say this is DV, it's simply a slice or an infinitely small chunk of the total volume. Now just for grins here, let's go through and see what would happen if we were to integrate all of our little slices of volume. That is what happens if I take an infinite sum of these little infinitely small volumes. So plugging in our equation for dv and integrating all of our different cylinders from a radius of zero all the way out to a radius of capital R, we can go through and see what this is gonna yield. And lo and behold, we find that in integrating all of the volumes of these little cylinders from zero to capital R, we find pi r squared h. That is the volume or the total volume of a solid cylinder. Now realize, of course, this is not the end goal here. We're trying to solve for the rotational moment of inertia of this cylinder around a central axis. We're not trying to solve for the volume. But I do want to point out that when we went through and integrated all, all of our little slices of volume, we came up with the total volume. Now, in trying to reach our end goal of finding the rotational moment of inertia, we need to take volume and turn it into mass. Because remember, what we're trying to do is treat this cylinder as though it is a single particle. So we need the mass. Now, in trying to relate volume to mass, what we need to realize is we have to talk about density. Now we know that mass is equal to density multiplied by volume. And if we relate this back to the problem that we're dealing with here, in trying to find the mass of this slice, I'm gonna call that dm, since it's an infinitely small chunk of the total mass, we can say that is equal to the density of the material multiplied by its volume. Now the volume of a slice we know is dv, we found that over here. So in order to determine the mass of a slice, we need to determine the density of this entire cylinder. Now remember, density is equal to mass over volume. So we know the total mass of the cylinder, that is m. And the volume we just determined right here, pi r squared h. So what we can do is combine our equation for density with our equation for volume, and that's gonna yield our equation for the mass of a slice. And a bunch of stuff cancels out here. And one important thing to note here is H, the height of this cylinder, does not matter. It is actually irrelevant. All that matters in this problem in determining the mass of a slice is simply the area, or really the shape of the top face of this shape. And that's a little bit counterintuitive, but it's how it works out. The math checks out. And we can go through with our mass of a single slice. And if we were to add all of these masses of our slice up, we would find that m equals m. And of course that makes sense. When we add up all of the masses 
of all of our cylinders in going from a radius of zero all the way out to a radius of R, effectively what we've done is we've added up the mass of every single slice, which we know needs to equal M. And so again, we've simply shown that the calculus works and we can take away this, the big moral of the story in, in why I've done this in solving for mass and this in solving for volume is that when we integrate a particular function, that integral can have meanings, provided we understand what that function was showing going into the integral. So in solving for the total inertia, let's go through and solve for the inertia of a single particle or of a single slice. All right, so here we are, we're looking at the inertia or the rotational moment of inertia of a slice or of our cylinder here. So we've found the mass of this slice and we're simply going to plug that mass into our equation for the moment of inertia of a particle. This is going to give us not the total inertia, but just the inertia of a slice, hence di. So this is going to be the mass dm multiplied by the radius squared. Now in plugging in our equation for dm, which we have right here, We've got dm multiplied by r squared. Now I'm not gonna put the r squared over here, I'm just gonna make this r cubed. And that is di, the inertia of a slice. Now, you should be starting to see a pattern here when we had or added up all of our dvs, we got the total volume. When we added up all of our dms, we got the total mass. So what do you think we're gonna do here with our di's? That's right, we're gonna go through and we're gonna integrate these or we're gonna add them all up. So the total inertia, the total inertia I is going to be equal to the infinite sum of all of our di's. So subbing in our expression for di and looking at all of these tiny little or infinitely small moments of inertia from a radius of zero to a radius of capital R, we can evaluate this integral. And we come up with the total inertia of the cylinder around a central axis is one half mr squared. So what we've managed to do here is take a look at a cylinder really as an infinite sum of tiny little hollow cylinders that are all concentric around a central axis. And we've treated those infinitely thin cylinders as particles. And in treating them as particles, we've been able to find their volume, their mass, and then their inertia. And then we've been able to add up all of those inertias to come up with the total rotational moment of inertia for this cylinder. Now realize this rotational moment of inertia, one half mr squared, only applies when we rotate this cylinder around the central axis. If we were to try to rotate this cylinder around any other axis that did not pass through its center, we'd have to go through and find a different moment of inertia based on those other conditions. But that is the rotational moment of inertia of a solid cylinder around an axis which passes through its center. And that's all for now.